Right, I'm going to make a start now. Um, hi everyone, welcome to the first um, lesson of the Web Dev Workshop. Um, this is going to be a special lesson, so it's going to be a crash course through uh, HTML. I'm going to be teaching HTML, and um, Tom here, he's going to be teaching CSS afterwards, um, and it's just going to be the very basics. Um, can I just have a show of hands? Who's planning to code along with me? Um, great. Um, I'll try and go a bit slower then. Um, Um, so, the um, websites have, um, they're coded in mainly three languages. So, the HTML, which is the content of the website, that, so the text, the images, tables, stuff like that. Then CSS, which, is, um, which manipulates how it looks. So, colors, borders, um, spacing, stuff like that. And then JavaScript, which is a bit more complex, it's how it behaves. Um, and you can do a lot with that, and we're going to be exploring that uh, throughout the rest of the term. Um, so what you need for this course is a text editor and a web browser. I really recommend that you use Chrome because um, I've had problems using other web browsers. So um, get them open now if you're going to be coding with me. Okay, so let's start by making a new folder. Um, and inside this folder, we want to make a file called um, index.html. So index is a special file name, which means that if you navigate to that folder, most servers are set up so that they'll go to that HTML uh, file. Okay. And um, HTML is a markup language. So you have stuff that looks like this. If you did last year's Haskell paper, um, this should look a bit familiar. Um, so it's a more than sign and a less than sign, and inside that is a tag name, um, and that defines what that thing is. And then that's uh, within that tag you have some content, um, and this is a special case here. So if you have a tag with no content inside it, um, you can write it like this. So these two things are the same if you get rid of the content. Um, so let's type, um, to, s to set this up, type HTML as a tag and close that tag. So it's slash HTML. And let's give ourselves a couple of lines. Um, and you also need to add one special tag at the top. It's the doc type tag, and that just tells the browser what the document is. And that's especially important for HTML5. So you'll find that um, if you don't type this, some HTML5 features won't work, and that's what you need to type. Uh, HTML5 is uh, an, an HTML file is made up of two main parts. There's the head and the body. So inside the head, you have um, information like metadata, and inside the body, you have the actual content of the web page. So that's what you see on the screen. So in the body, let's type, um, let's type something, classic hello world. And if you open that file on your web browser, so if you go back to there and you double click on that, you'll see that appear. So I've got this uh, loaded up here. Um, you should have that on your screen now. If you don't, then you've got something not working. Uh, we're not set up right, but that's what you should have. Uh, next thing we're going to do is the title of the web page. So this is the, um, the piece of text at the top here. So that's what um, the title is. So that will be inside the, inside the head. And inside the title tags, you put what the, um, the website is. So let's put Tony Field for Dot President. Um, and if you refresh your page, you should see that appear at the top. Okay. 
Um, next thing we're going to look at is headings and paragraphs. So at the moment we've got one piece of plain text on the screen, um, but we want um, stuff uh, like titles and things that um, show where uh, different sections of the website are. Um, and the main tags we use for them are H1, which is a top level heading. Okay. And it's important to note that um, you should only have one H1 tag on every website. So that's like the main title, the main heading of that web page. Okay. Let's see. So you can see there that that, that looks a bit different. Um, just something to note, because we're coding in plain HTML, it's not going to look very good. But the point of this is just to teach you how to get the content on the web page. Um, and obviously, if you type H2, um, it's going to be something a bit smaller. Okay. Um, so let's add some content to the website. Let's type uh, field 2017. Um, and let's have a subtitle. So. <laughs> and um, let's add a paragraph as well. So paragraphs are enclosed inside P tags. Okay, so now you can see that that's, um, that's appeared on there. So let's add a new, um, another section. So we're going to do another H2 tag, and um, this section is going to be about Tony. Let's do meet Tony. Uh, okay. And that's a paragraph about him. I'm just going to zoom out a bit because um, you can't see much. Um, and something to, important to note, so here on line 12, I've got some white space. Um, I can have as much white space as I want, and it won't affect what's displayed. So it's a lot like Java um, in that it doesn't really matter how much white space you have. Um, let's say we want a break between these two sections. Um, a tag for a break, um, so a small gap between these two sections, is BR. And that doesn't have any content. We're just saying that we want that thing. So if you type that, that's like, that is the same as writing this. But it's better to write it um, the other way. So if you see there, there's um, a space there. Um, next, I'm going to talk about comments. So in um, HTML, the comments are um, they're written like this. So just bear with me. So it's inside a tag, you put exclamation mark, dash, dash. And then you type your comment on there. And then to end that comment, you type dash dash again. Okay. Right, um, next I'm going to talk about images and links. So adding um, images and stuff. Uh, these tags have uh, attributes inside them. 
So we've already talked about um, tags with just the tag name in. Um, now we're going to look at these. So you've got the name of an attribute, and then that will equal a value. And that value is always in quotes. Um, so let's download an image of Tony. Classic one. Okay. Um, I recommend you do this as well, so that you can see how to do it. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to save that in, um, inside your folder, which you're doing the website in. Um, what I like to do is I like to make an image uh, folder inside that folder, so a subfolder in that, just to keep it all tidy. Um, so to link that image onto, um, onto the page, what you need to type is um, an IMG tag, which obviously stands for image. And the image tag doesn't have any content in it. It's just a tag with some information inside it. So let's end it there. Uh, so we want to define where the image actually is. So the uh, tag name for that is source, so SRC. And the um, information and the data in there will be the file name of the image. And it's always the file name in relation to where you will uh, where this HTML5, where this HTML file is. So mine is images slash Tony dot JPEG. Great. And also inside uh, inside IMG tags, it's good to write um, an alt attribute as well. So this is relevant for when people have trouble loading up images. So maybe that might be you've accidentally moved your image file somewhere or you've deleted it, or people just have really slow internet connection so the images don't load. Um, so the alt tag is what displays when you move your mouse over the image. So let's type in Tony Field. That's not working. Let's corrupt that. So you can see that the alt tag is displayed when you, like when something goes wrong with the image. Um, next, we're going to talk about links. Um, so you can add hyperlinks to uh, text. And the tag for that is the A tag. So let's hyperlink this to Tony's website. Uh, what we want to do is surround that by the tag. Okay. And inside the A tag, what you want to type is um, the attribute href. That stands for hypertext reference. And the uh, thing that goes there is the thing you want to link to. So that's copy Tony's website into there. Yeah. Question. Uh, question there? Hey man. Um, so with the alt tag, yeah. uh, is it the case, so it's, is it short for like alternative? In the case that the first thing is. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. We refresh the page, you can see that the hyperlinks appeared there. So you click on that, obviously you get to Tony's website. Okay. Um, next we're going to talk about lists. You can see how I, what I think about Windows. Um, so let's add a list of manifesto points for Tony. Uh, let's add a heading called Manifesto. I'm quite bad at typing, as you can see. Okay. Um, in HTML, there's two types of list. Well, there's actually three types, but there's two types which are used most commonly. Um, that's an ordered list and an unordered list. So in an ordered list, you have 
Um, the numbers down the side, so it's like one, two, three, and um, the points are listed. An unordered list would be bullet points. Um, and the tags for them are UL and OL, respectively. So let's make an unordered list. So this just defines where a list is. We want to add some elements to the list. And the tag for list elements is LI. And you want to type some content inside there. So um, let's add bar nights need to be better. Someone, uh, so you know the event survey I sent around to everyone? Someone on that as a comment wrote, bar nights need to be better. Um, so apparently that needs to happen. Okay. And if we refresh the page, you can see it's displayed there. Uh, let's add another, another point. Um, digest need to be better. Um, and what else? Someone, someone name an issue with DocSock. We need more money. Okay, and refresh the page. We get that. Okay, and I want to show you an ordered list as well. So add a um, H3. Um, and in exactly the same way, we would write an ordered list, so the OL tag. And let's put some list elements in there. So LI. And the great thing about HTML is, is it numbers stuff for you. Um, so I can type that and um, as you can see here when it loads, it's got the numbers down the side for you. So you don't need to worry about that. You can also have nested lists. So you can have a list inside a list. Um, so let's put an unordered list inside there. So inside the ordered list. Um, in HTML, just to note, indents don't matter, spacing doesn't matter, just like Java. So that's how you do lists. Um, let's look at inline elements. Um, so this is stuff like bold and italics, and before HTML5, underline as well. You could do in um, within the HTML code. Uh, actually, with the HTML5 um, standard, we actually do underlines inside the CSS instead of the HTML. Um, so let's make something bold. Let's make this bold, the word multiple. What we need to do is surround that by tags again, and the tag name is strong. Uh, the other thing we can do is italics, and what HTML defines that as is an emphasis. So let's surround fantastic by um, an emphasis tag. So it's EM. Um, and as you can see, that's done that. 
Um, next thing I'm going to do is forms. So web forms are uh, quite popular, obviously, and um, they're a bit fiddly to do, but they'll be fine. So let's do a heading. Uh, sign up to join the campaign. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, a form is surrounded by the form tag. Um, and the form has two attributes which we need. So the first attribute is the action attribute. And the action attribute is um, is where to send the information to. Uh, that usually takes the form of PHP files um, or JavaScript if, um, if you're doing that. So let's do um, go.php. We don't have that file, uh, but just imagine that was there and that was all programmed in. Um, and the second tag we need uh, is the method tag. And the method tag inside the form, uh, sorry, the method attribute inside the form defines uh, how to send the form data um, in terms of HTTP. So let's type in um, post. So this would be for if you actually had somewhere to send it to, which we don't. I'm just showing you this um, to show you how to make a form. And as you can see, there's nothing there because we've not actually added anything to the form. Um, so to add stuff to the form, we have to add elements. Um, they normally take the type, uh, the form of input tags. So this is where the user can input stuff onto the web page. Um, that doesn't need a closing tag because we don't have any content in there. And inside the input tag, we have uh, the attribute type, and that's the type of input. So you can get lots of types of input, like uh, text boxes, password boxes, uh, radio buttons. Um, let's do the um, let's do text. That's the simplest one to do. Um, and input tags also need a name. So that's an identifier, a unique identifier within the form. Um, that's really useful for when you're labeling it and when you send the data, um, that is, uh, that's going to accompany the data. So name, uh, let's do name. So here you can see a text box has come up where you can type stuff. And for this, what we want to do is want to label it because that's not very useful at the moment. Um, let's do a label tag. And um, inside the label tag, we can define which uh, input it's the label for and the uh, attribute for that is for and in there we want to type the name of the input so here if we want to um, label this input here we type the name of it which is in my case name with a capital M And uh, let's type the text for that, so name. As you can see, that's shown up here. Um, so let's make a couple of them. We can also have a password box. So for passwords, what you need to type Obviously, in the type of the input is password. Uh, 
and we need to change the name because we can't have two of the same name inside the same form. Um, so let's do that. And change it on the label as well. So we're labeling the right thing. Um, and the label for that is going to be what is your pin number? Okay, so you can see there that's shown up. Okay. Um, so I said at the beginning that HTML5 uh, HTML files don't care about white space or lines. Um, so we need to type the break tag here. And that just puts the other field onto a new line. So just like that. We go. Um, and I'm just going to show you one more thing. It's going to be radio buttons. Um, okay. So for the label for that, let's put are you an undergrad? Um, and what? F um, so for radio buttons, it's a bit different. We have two different. Uh, we have different lab uh, different input tags for each radio button. And we know that they belong together by giving them the same name. So let's make the input type radio. Um, radio buttons are um, like the things which you select, um, and you can only select one of them. That wasn't explained very clearly, but um, there we go. So I've added two different um, inputs here, and I've given the input, um, well, I've just written yes and no next to the inputs. Okay. Um. Let's just do that to make it a bit more clear. So as you can see on the screen here, we've got those, so yes and no, and it only lets me select one because I've got the same name on both of the, uh, the inputs. And finally we need a submit button. Um, I'm just going to add a line break between uh, the password field and the undergrad um, buttons. Excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. You said uh, the attribute for the input cannot be the same as the Oh, yeah, but that's a typo. Undergrad. Yeah, was that? If they are the same, what's happening? Um, they basically, it thinks it's the same, it's the same like, piece of information that you're inputting. Mm -hmm. um, it gets a bit messy when you're submitting stuff. Yeah. Okay. So the final thing we want on the form is a submit button. And so we're going to write, um, it's another input type. So the type of it is submit. And we'll give it the name submit as well. And with um, submit buttons, we actually define, we actually give it the label inside the tag itself. So we use the attribute value. And the value is what's going to be displayed. So submit. That's the thing that's going to appear on top of the button. Any questions on any of that just before I go on? Yeah? How does it know, how are you referring to both of those radio buttons? So like when you press one, is it like 
Um, no, like, oh yeah, I need a tag there. Um, I can't remember actually, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, I've not I've not used forms to be honest. So um, you would probably have another attribute here, which would uh, submit like yeah, which one you clicked. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you can see the submit button there. Um, so, if you saw there, when I click on the submit button, it goes to go slash PHP, which is a file I've not made. And that's referring to the action attribute inside my form tag. Um, next, let's just look at some semantics with HTML. Um, the most common thing you'll see um, in terms of semantics is the div tag. And that means division. So div tags do nothing to the um, actual uh, content on the page. So let's surround um, the uh, let's surround these three lines here at the top. So the title and just the introduction bit with a div tag. And we use divs when there's a distinct section on the web page, um, which we might want to style differently to everything else. Okay. And if I refresh the page, you'll see that nothing happens, as I said. Okay. Um, here I'm going to use divs to um, link, um, link a navbar to different sections of the page. So um, I'm going to have it so that if I click on a button, it's going to scroll down to that area of the page, just like when you click on something on Wikipedia at the top, it scrolls down to that section. Um, and we can do that by using the ID tag inside, uh, the ID attribute inside the div tag. So let's add an attribute to that. Okay. And ID tags must also have unique names, so you can't have the same ID um, name uh, on the same web page. So let's do about. And let's uh, surround the manifesto as well with the div tag. One of the most common um, mistakes you might make when you're coding HTML is missing out div tags. So if you've got CSS and it's really like um, screwing up and it's not working, just check that your div tags match up. Um, so if you use a text editor like Vim, it will usually uh, highlight uh, what div tag you're closing, so like bracket completion. I'm using Atom at the moment, so if you can see here there's blue lines under this div and this div. We use a lot of nested divs inside uh, HTML, in HTML, so that's something to look out for. And let's add one to the form as well. Uh, sign up. So now we have four sections of the page with different ID tags. Um, actually, the top one doesn't have one, but we don't really need it. Okay. So if I refresh the page here. Nothing happens, as, you, as I said. Um, okay, the final thing I'm going to add to this page is a navigation bar at the top. Um, in HTML4 and before that, uh, it was actually a uh, div that people use for navigation. But in HTML5, there's a tag called nav, um, which is specifically for nav bars. So let's add that at the top of the body. Um, and inside the nav, we're going to add some uh, navigation buttons. So let's do about Tony. Um, manifesto. And sign up.
So you can see here at the top, um, it's it's there. And let's add some links to each of those. Um, so use the A tag again for links. And let's put in there the place we're going to link it to. So use the href attribute. Um, and to link this to a section of the page, we use the hash character and then the ID of wherever you want to link it to. So let's say about Tony, we want to link it to this div here. And it's got the ID about. So we do href equals hash about. I'm going to do that for the others as well. And if I click on sign up here, hopefully it will scroll to the bottom of the page. Yep. Um, so what that's doing is it's pointing um, the page at that thing there. Um, and the reason that, well, usually that actually goes to the top of the page, but because there's not much um, stuff, or well, there's nothing below that, um, it just scrolls to the bottom of the page. So we click on, um, if we click on manifesto, spelt that wrong. Yeah, you see it does that as well. And just the final stuff we need to do, um, some formalities with HTML. Um, inside, the eight, inside the head tag, we want to add the character set which we're using. Um, that's really important if you're adding stuff like um, emojis, as some of you like to add. Um, and we want to add a piece of metadata there. So we use the meta tag. Um, that just means it's a piece of metadata, obviously. And the attribute uh, for that, we need the char set attribute. Okay. And you can see here that um, there's, well, Atom suggested a load of different character sets which we can use. Um, so if you're using um, East Asian typography, you might want to use different stuff. Um, I'm going to use Unicode because it's the standard. And the uh, code for that is UTF-8. That's something that you should get into the habit of adding to web pages if you're going to be doing that. Um, and finally, we're going to add in an icon. So you can see here that there's no icon for the website. We can add that. And let's add the .soc logo for that. So you go to facebook.com slash ic.soc. And we're going to download that logo to use. So just save that to your images folder as before. And save it with the file name icon. Um, and to do the uh, icon, you need a tag um, called link. And that's an empty tag like that. Um, and let's have the rel attribute. And that's going to be icon. So this just tells it what it is. And we also need to reference that to um, where the image file is. So again, we use the href, the hypertext reference um, attribute there. And inside there, we're going to type the path of uh, the icon image. So mine's an images slash icon. If 
we've refreshed the page, you can see that um, an icon's appeared. So if I save that to my favorites, um, that icon's going to be there. Okay, um, that's the end of the HTML section of this session. Um, Tom's going to be up next, showing you how to make this look less crap. Um, so let's just take a 10-minute break. Okay, yeah, so we're going to do some CSS now, um, so if you'd like to just buy it down. <laughs> okay, so I've slightly changed the HTML, so if you want to get the updated version, you can just use that link, but otherwise it should be okay. Um, so yeah, so we've covered HTML, but now we're going to do um, CSS, which is cascading style sheets. So, uh, I just put a link on the code, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. If you just follow that, then you can copy and paste the HTML. It's pretty much the same. I've added a few things. Uh, yeah, so uh, you saw Morris's website. It's there as well. It's pretty ugly. Um, it's bare bones, not very nice. Most websites on the internet today don't look like this. Uh, and that's because they use CSS. Uh, in the past, you used to be able to do styling in HTML, and I've put some of it there. The problem is that HTML is about markup. It's about the content of the website, not about the style. Um, like, we don't care uh, in the HTML what the font size is, what the color is. This is for styles, uh, and that's where CSS uh, comes in. It separates the content from the form, essentially. So um, there's a, a few ways of doing it. Uh, there's three ways, in fact. There's inline, which you can use uh, the style attribute. So, for example, can everyone see the code, by the way? Is it big enough? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Um, so you could type style equals and then put your CSS in here. Uh, another way of doing it is you can use the style tag uh, and put your CSS in there. For example, like this, and you can put your CSS in there. But the third way and the, the best way uh, is to include an external CSS style sheet. Uh, and the reason this is the best way is because we want to separate uh, the CSS from the HTML. If it's all mixed in together, that's a bit messy and you don't really want that. Uh, so that, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So uh, in your directory, where you've got your uh, HTML, it's quite small, but if you create a new file, call it whatever you want, let's say styles.css, uh, in the same directory as your index. Uh, and then you can include this just by typing the code there. So link in your header, in your head rather. Um, href to wherever it is. Uh, you need to tell um, the browser like what type of file it is, so that's what the type attribute is. And then you need to say what relation it is as well to this document, so you do a rel tag and just tell it that it's a style sheet. Uh, and then obviously nothing will happen at the moment because the style sheet's empty, but when we start adding some CSS then you'll start to see changes on the page. Um, also, um, the, file, the file extension is CSS, there's different uh, .css, there's different like preprocessors, but we're not going to cover those in this lesson, we're just going to go like with the basics. So, right, we want to start targeting different things now. So, we've got all these different HTML tags, uh, header, div, h1, and now we want to tell uh, the CSS like what to do with that. Uh, and we need a way of like hooking into it. So. Uh, there's a few different ways. You can either target the tag itself just by typing, uh, well, the name of the tag without the angle brackets. Um, you can also uh, target classes. We haven't gone through classes yet, but I'll explain that in a second. And you can also target IDs, like uh, what Morris showed before. And again, it's the same symbol. It's the hash. So um, let's let's try doing something. So in your styles.css, uh, um, this is 
is too small. Yeah, okay. So let's say we want to change the H1. Uh, the way we do that is by typing H1 and then braces. Um, I'll just move on to the next slide. So the actual rules themselves um, look like a property, uh, colon, and then a value. Uh, and we put all these inside our declaration. So this is our declaration, and this is our selector. So once we've written the selector, we can start putting things inside to tell it what to do. So here are a few simple ones. Uh, if I type color uh, the American way, and then red, and save that, and refresh the page, you can see that the H1 has changed. It's now red. Uh, so that's a super basic thing you can do. Uh, we've already got some IDs in here, I think. Yeah, so for example, I've got div ID is main. So let's try uh, using the uh, ID syntax to get into it. So if I make a new one, type main, let's make this, the stuff in here green, for example. And you can see now that the stuff in main has turned green. Uh, so there's a few resources. If you go to the link down there, this is where the slides are, so you can click on these links. Um, this one is a really good general reference for all different types of CSS properties. Obviously, in 20 minutes, half an hour, we can't go through every single property. There's hundreds of them. Uh, but this is like a comprehensive list of all of them, so you can just reference it whenever you need. This one is also sort of not as good, but it does the same thing. And then also for colors. Um, so you might have noticed that at the moment I'm just typing like the English names for the colors, but you can also use different syntaxes for this. Uh, you can use hex colors as well. For example, uh, red in hex looks like this. Um, so this website is good if you want to just find out what the hex is. Um, like you can just go on here, find out what color you want, and then just copy the hex code. So it's up to you, like whatever you do with that. Uh, so let's actually like start learning some properties because at the moment you only know color. Um, here are a few different things you can play around with, and I'll show you how to use them now. So yeah, you've seen color. You can change the color to whatever you want. Let's try doing something with our navigation bar. Okay. Um, so at the moment it's sort of I think it's like Times New Roman. It's not very nice. We can change the font by using font family. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we want to target the nav. So this is a tag, so we can just type it like that with no uh, angle brackets. Um, so that's our, uh, the property, and then we want to type the value. Um, basically here, you can just type uh, any font face you want, so I don't know. We can have that. And then if I refresh the page, you can see that the, the navigation is now in Comic Sans. Uh, again, all these are relatively self-explanatory. A thing about font family is if you try having a font and it doesn't exist, um, well, it's, it's just going to like revert back to the default one. So what you can do is you can do a comma-separated list of all the different types of fonts. For example, if Comic Sans doesn't work, then it will go to the next one. If that doesn't work, it will go to the next one. So now I've done Sans Serif, which is just like a generic um, like class of fonts. So now if Comic Sans doesn't work, it's at least going to look slightly okay. But I'll put it back to Comic Sans for now. Yeah, all the other ones, self-explanatory. You can do, you type this, there's loads of different units you can use. I'm just going to use pixels for now, so let's say 16 pixels. Uh, doesn't look that much different, let's change it. Uh, right, so yeah, this is because, the first, who asked that question? Okay. Um, the first one is the name of a font, um, but the second one is a class of fonts. So serif fonts are the ones with like the little, you know, like Times New Roman has like bits on the end of characters. Uh, sans serif is just without those. Um, there's also, so uh, courier is like a monospaced font, but you can also, um, if I type monospace, this targets all different types of monospace fonts. So again, if I corrupt the Comic Sans, now they're all monospaced. It's, it doesn't guarantee that you'll get a specific font, but you'll get one of that type, essentially. Okay, uh, what else do we have? 
font weight, this is how you uh, choose like if it's bold or not. So I type font weight. Uh, you can specify a number, which is because there's different like variations of uh, boldness, or you can just type bold. If I refresh, looks bold. If I want it to be bolder, I think I can type bolder. Hmm. Well, Comic Sans doesn't get bolder, but some fonts do. Uh, font style, another one we can use. Uh, so this is like, well, Morris showed you about the emphasis tag. There's actually no guarantee that the emphasis tag will make it italic, but if you specify it in CSS, then it will definitely go italic, if it exists. There we go. And there's a few different types of like values you can put in there again. If you follow the links on the slides, then they're all explained there. Uh, text align is another good one. Self-explanatory. Make it center, left, right. Uh, and what have we got? Background color as well. Okay, so uh, I've got a footer down at the bottom. I kind of want that to have a background uh, color. So if I look at my, my HTML, I've got a footer tag here. If I just type footer to get in there so I can start accessing it, um, and I choose a background color. And let's have a font color as well so I can actually read the font. And then you can see it's changed down at the bottom. <coughs> okay. So that, yeah, those are a few of them. If you want more, go on the website. And I'll, I'd spend a few more as well. So there's also a few different things we can do. Uh, let's say I want to change uh, lots of different tags or different um, things on the page. Uh, but I don't want to repeat the same thing over and over again. So let's say I want all my headers to be purple. But we've got different types of headers. We've got H1s, H2, H3. If I type, well, we have H1 up here. Uh, I want to make it purple. But only that one's changed. So I could have, I want to make my H2s purple as well. Okay, now my H2s are purple. Um, oh, my H3 is still not purple, so I need to add another one. Uh, as you can see, this is getting quite repetitive, and what if I want to change all my headers to orange later on? Then I'm going to have to go through and change all those different things. So what you can do is you can um, do a comma-separated list of different selectors. So if I, want to, um, if I want to change all my headers, I can just do that. Uh, get rid of this, because I don't need it anymore. If I refresh the page, um, they're all purple now. Even the H3, the small H3, the lecturer, is now purple. And again, I've changed my mind. I want it to be orange now. And they've all changed. So that's one way of uh, like reducing repetition, yeah? Uh, if you've got, like, say you've got, like, I don't know, an H2 within your main view, mm -hmm. how does it know whether to make it orange or green? I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to that. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, this is, this is called chaining. Um, next. Uh, yeah, so this is inheritance as well. So if I, uh, well, this is sort of what you've just touched upon. Uh, I want to make everything inside um, the main green. So I did that, but how come uh, in main, how come the H2 went uh, green? How come, how come the uh, paragraph went green? And that's because... Uh, the styles are inherited down, so if you have a tag within a tag, if it's nested, then that's going to get uh, the same styling as the parent. Um, okay. And that's the same sort of thing. Um, yeah, so you can join these things together, you can have chaining, you can also, you don't have, you can like separate it out. I can write loads of different H1 rules. Uh, it doesn't have to be all together, it's best to keep it together, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and now you can see, um, again, this is how it overrides. So these two things are at the same sort of uh, level of precedence. So what CSS does is it chooses the one which is furthest down in the file. Um, it's like the actual thing it's going to use. So originally, the, this is an H1 at the top. It would be red. Uh, but I've created a new rule down here, which makes it orange. And so this rule takes precedence because it's lower down. And so the H1 has become orange, whereas the H2 and the H3 are red. 
Uh, right, here's a thing about overriding. So see, the thing about CSS is it always chooses the most specific uh, selector. So, you, so uh, I've said that my paragraph, all the stuff is blue. So what I've just talked about with the inheritance, you'd think that the, the span tag in here is also going to be blue. But because I've specified P span, which means any spans within a P, um, it's, be it's become green because that one's more specific. And you can combine all these different things. Uh, I will just talk about classes for a second because Morris didn't really go over those. Um, so an ID can only be used once on a specific web page, whereas classes define a whole, a whole class of items. So um, let's say I want to have a class of big items. Uh, let's say I want this link to be big. So I type class as an attribute in the HTML. And I can make this up. I can choose whatever I want for this. So I call it big. Um, I also want this paragraph to be big as well, let's say. So I'm going to make that big. And then inside my CSS, I'm going to target the big thing, which is done with the full stop. So big. And let's say I want my f all the font sizes in the big to be 200% of the normal size. So I type that. And you can see now that the uh, the home link has gone big, and also this paragraph. And that's how um, classes work. It's quite simple. Uh, again, yeah, you can, so for example, this one specifies a paragraph with the special uh, class. This one is a div with the ID main. So if you had something else with the ID main, if it wasn't a div, then it's not going to get styled by that particular rule. This one is a link with a green class and the ID of awesome. You get the idea. OK, so that's just nice, but like, it hasn't changed the layout of the page. It's all still flowing in the same way. Uh, this is just like colors and what have you. So let's actually just talk a little bit about the box model. So every uh, tag in HTML is a rectangle, essentially. Uh, you can't see it, because obviously it's transparent, but everything is bounded by a rectangle. And there's four different, there's four different rectangles contained in there. So, for example, my paragraph here, um, the content goes inside this content box. And you can uh, determine the size of the content box using the tags um, width and height. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, I want to make this particular, the big, the big paragraph. I'm going to change the width and the height of it. So, I can now use what I've just learned. I can do p.big. So, that's going to get my big paragraph. Uh, and I want to make it quite narrow, so I'm going to say width 100 pixels. If I refresh the page, it's now gone really thin. Uh, and you can do the same for height as well. I can change my picture's width and height. Let's make a really small picture of Tony. There you go. Get rid of that. Comments in CSS, by the way, are denoted kind of like in C. Uh, and in, well, loads of languages actually, C style comments, just like that, uh, forward slash, asterisk, and then finish it with an asterisk and a forward slash. There we go. Um, so then after the content box, we have a padding box. Uh, now to make this really obvious, what's going on, I'm going to make this have a background color, which we did earlier. So background color, um, going to use a hex code, um, make it a light gray. Can't actually see that. That's too. Okay, so now you can see that's actually the content box. The grey outline is the con is the content box. So what padding does? Um, padding is sort of like an extension on the content box, uh, but no content can go in there. So <clears throat> you can uh, like specify this. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second with the padding. Uh, left, top, right, and bottom. Uh, so let's say I want 30 pixels of padding on the left. And you can see now that on the left-hand side, there's a, a, like a, a gap. Uh, and you can do that for all of them. Um, let's make 50 pixels of padding on the top. And now the top's got that spacing. <coughs> uh, there is actually a shorthand for this. Uh, if you want to do top, right, bottom, and left all at the same time, instead of typing four lines, you can actually just type padding, 
uh, and then do whatever you want. So let's say I want lots of padding on the bottom, no padding on the left hand side. So yeah, top, right, bottom, left. And you can now see that there's a lot of padding on the bottom, none on the left, and so on. Um, after the padding, there's a border. Uh, border, kind of self-explanatory. After the uh, padding, you get like a, a line around it. So if I do border top uh, width, make it 10 pixels, say. And nothing happens because we haven't told it uh, like what style or anything. So border top um, style. We want to make it solid. So let's type that. And now we've got a uh, solid border on the top. Um, these things are quite, like, they come quite naturally when you uh, start learning it. So I want to change the color. So I can do border top color. Uh, make it red. And then you've got a red border on the top. There's also shorthand for this. So I can reduce all this to a single line. Just border top. Move it all together. The same thing. You can also remove the top even and have it do it for top, left, right, and bottom. And then you've got a border around the whole thing. OK? Um, and then after the border, there's margin. So margin is even after the border. And it's how you specify space between different neighboring elements on a page. So um, it's kind of hard to see on here, but I'll do it anyway. So. I'll use my shorthand, which is just margin. And I want, let's say I want to have 50 pixels of margin around each side. I type that, refresh the page, and you can now see that they've got like 50 pixels of spacing around it. That's what margin is. Um, OK. And now we're just going to do a bit of positioning as well. So again, we, we can now do like this, uh, the size and the margin, padding, border. But we can't actually like say, I want this to be on the right, I want this to be on the left. And this is where our position, uh, tags com uh, position properties come in. So uh, at the moment, by default, everything on the page is position static. Uh, and it just means that it flows down like that, how you'd expect. But there's actually three, different, three other types of positioning which you can use. So we have absolute positioning, which is, kind of, well, the, the clues in the name. You choose absolute, and then you can choose pinpoint the precise place in the page where you want it to be. So Tony's picture, you can't really see it there, so I want to move it to the top. So I'm going to go back to my image. The position is static by default, so I want to make it absolute now. And, uh, did I say, yeah, so nothing's happened at the moment because I need to use these properties as well, uh, top, left, right, and bottom. So I want it to be on the top right. Um, so I'm going to say top is zero. And now it's right at the top of the page. I want it to be on the right-hand side as well, though. So I'm going to say right zero. And what this means is it's like how many pixels from the right you want it to be and how many pixels from the top. And now my picture of Tony is in the top right. Um, yeah, so pixels aren't the best unit of measurement to use nowadays with all the different like uh, screen pixel densities and what have you. Uh, I'm just using it now because it's simple. But yeah, pixels are a bad one to use. There's also, well, there's loads of different units you can use. Percentage based is nice. You can do percentages, so I can make it go 50% from that side. And when I like resize the bright browser window, it's going to stay at 50%. Um, there's also, but there's a, there's a load of them, but they're all on the reference. Uh, I'd recommend you don't use pixels normally, just for now. Um, okay, so that's position absolute. It's always going to stay there, even when you scroll. It's always going to be locked to that, to that position on the page. There's also position relative. This one's quite interesting. So if I do a relative position and remove these, it's now back to where it was. Um, even if I do top zero, right zero, again, nothing's going to happen. 
because what relative means is it's relative to where its position should be on the page. So let's say I want to move it now uh, 50 pixels to the right, uh, I think. So I'll type left 50 pixels. And now it's moved relative to its original position. Uh, the final one is fixed, which is sim kind of similar to absolute, except it's locked to the browser viewport as well. So if I scroll uh, with this, it's going to stay even like... So when you uh, have absolute, where the zero position is always going to be in that top right side of the page. But with fixed, um, you'll see this is relative to the viewport, not the actual um, page itself. So now I've got one, uh, and a lovely picture of Tony, which you can't get rid of now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, what else? We've got f yeah floating as well. I'll just go through this really quickly because we're running out of time. Uh, floats. The way floats work are so block level. All these elements go like below each other. Um, let me remove this thing. you'll see that they all like stack from top to bottom. And sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want something to the left of an element or something to the right of an element. So what we can do with that is we can use floats. So I want this big paragraph now to be on the left, but I don't want it to block the, th the right hand side. So by telling it to float to the left, you can now see that it's uh, stuck on the left hand side and now everything else can flow around it. Uh, and this is where like your margins and stuff become useful because without a margin, if I just make the mar the right margin zero, then you can see it's kind of like bunched together too much. So that's what margin does basically. Uh, yeah. So there's left, right, and non is the default. So you can play around with that. Um, okay. And now a uh, tiny little extra. So. Uh, there's certain things on the page, like links, which have different states. So at the moment, I'm hovering over this link, but nothing's happening. Like, it's kind of boring. So we have these things called pseudo-class selectors. There's a few listed there. Let's say when I hover over that link, I want it to uh, change color. I want it to go um, red. So if I do A colon hover, and then in here, I can say what I want to happen when I hover. So if I make it red and try hovering over this, then they go red. Quite simple. Um, focus is when you're like actually focused on that link. For example, like this, I'm focused on these things. <coughs> um, visited is for hyperlinks. So that's when you vi already previously visited that URL. It will change a different color or something. Um, and active is uh, when you're like actively pressing down on the on the link. And what's this? Yeah, so there are the resources. There's loads more I haven't had time to co cover today, but this is the basic building blocks of CSS. If you get the syntax, you get those things. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can do. Um, so many different properties which you can play around with and just have fun with. I can change the cursor to, I don't know, a crosshair. Uh, and now I've got a little crosshair cursor instead. There's so much stuff, but that's basically the gist of it. So um, I don't think we've got any more time for the JavaScript. Have we got time for JavaScript? No, I just want to see. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for now. Um, come back next week where Abhinav and Sylvester are going to be doing the presentation. We'll, go th we'll probably go through JavaScript then if you don't know any JavaScript because yeah, we ran out of time. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, Sylvester, do you have anything to say? Um, yeah, just a bit. Okay. Uh, so next week we will just uh, do a bit of uh, browser-based JavaScript. Um, not teaching JavaScript, just showing what it can do in the browser. And then we will start uh, uh, creating a, a backend for the application and uh, create, showing you how to create a whole web application.
Schreib's in.